Now this is what your car is supposed to look like. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Ed Gasket. On today's episode, we are gonna get our Porsche 911 inspected. Now because we're in Pennsylvania, we should see two stickers on the windshield right behind me. Number one, of course, being a safety inspection and number two being the emissions inspection. But of course, we have a couple hours before our appointment with the mechanic, so I'm gonna use that time to show you how I plan on restoring our paint on our 911. Now our goal, of course, is to convert this ugly, dull-looking pink job from looking something like this to looking something more like this. Now I'm gonna trim the fat from all this video, so let's cut to the chase and talk about step number one in making your paint look good once again. Now you wanna make sure you're starting off with a relatively clean vehicle, so after you wash and dry your car, you are officially ready for step one. Now the first step is to use a clay bar, and what a clay bar is is simply a tacky material, sort of like chewing gum, that we're gonna rub all over the panels of our vehicle. Now its job is to remove small pieces of debris that are embedded within the clear coat. Of course, we don't wanna polish this panel yet until we've removed all the small pieces of dirt that would unfortunately cause our panel just to scratch even more. So let's use the lubricant that comes with our clay bar and go over the entire vehicle. Now most clay bars come with their own lube, which is exactly what this is. So spray the panel that you're gonna be working on, and then of course you also wanna spray the clay bar itself. Now with firm equal pressure, you wanna rub that clay bar all over the panel. And most importantly, you want to be sure that there is plenty of lubrication between the panel that you're rubbing and your clay bar. Now you just wanna go panel by panel, spraying the entire panel with your lubrication, and then of course following up with your clay bar. Now depending on the size of your vehicle, you may notice that you run through a lot of lubrication, so make sure that you at least buy two bottles. Now one tip here is to make sure that you're periodically pulling apart your clay bar and folding over a new area that doesn't have any debris within it. This will make sure that your clay bar lasts a long time and that you don't accidentally scratch your clear coat. Now once you've finished clay barring a panel, be sure to dry off that panel with a nice, clean, new microfiber towel so that you can prepare that panel for the next step. Now guys, once you've gone over the entire car with your clay bar, you'll notice that if you give this paint a feel, it feels super smooth, which means we did remove a lot of debris from the clear coat. But if you look up close, you'll see that there are still plenty of scratches within the clear coat, and that clay bar plays no role in removing those scratches. So step two, of course, is all about removing those scratches. So in order to get the scratches out of the paint, we need to use a dual action polisher. Dual action meaning it spins that way, and the head rotates like this in dual ways. Now as far as what goes on the head of this polisher, I'm gonna center using the hook and loop fastener system, a foam pad. Now this foam pad is designed to be the first step in the scratch removal process and is also designed to be paired up with a compound that's designed in removing scratches from paint. Now you wanna get yourself a really nice compound. In this case, we're using Meguiar's Mirror Glaze because of course, that's what we're going for. Now this is a brand new pad, so we're gonna to wanna to coat this entire pad, which is actually called priming. So what I'll do here is lock this between my knees so that I can first shake up our product and then apply a liberal amount to the pad. Now you're really gonna wanna rub this into the pad so that when we apply it to our vehicle, there's no bare area that's rubbing against the paint, but rather the entire pad is completely for lack of a better word, saturated, or actually there is a better word, primed with product. Now once that foam head has been primed with compound, put a few small dime-sized drops of compound all over the head of the polisher. Set your polisher somewhere from low to medium speed, and then use the head as a way to spread the compound around the panel. Now once you turn on your polisher, your initial goal is just to spread this compound all over the area that you're gonna be working. And I recommend you cut each panel in about half of its size. Now once you're ready to compound, what you wanna do is go in a side-to-side -side fashion at about one inch per second. Cover the entire panel with compound and then move in a top-down fashion just to make sure that you cover every square inch at least two to three times. Now the stiff foam head wasn't really contouring well to this panel, so I actually cleaned off all the compound 
and redid this panel with the wool head. And what I found was that the wool head contoured way better to all the nooks and crannies on the car. So I did the entire rest of the car with the wool head. Now I recommend that you remove all of the extra compound from the panel before you move on to your next panel so that the compound doesn't dry out and make it really hard to remove later. Now be sure to add those dime size drops to your wool head every time you move on to a new panel just to make sure that you have enough compound on the head. Now once you've done one or two panels, you'll realize you start to get pretty good at this and it should only take you about an hour or less to do the entire car. Once you're completely finished, be sure to have a bunch of microfiber towels around because you'll go through at least 10 or 20 clean towels throughout this entire project. Put your soft foam head on the polisher now and you'll want to use a small amount of dime sized drops of polish on the pad. Now this time you don't have to prime the pad because you'll be using far less polish. Be sure to spread it over the panel just like you did the compound and your initial move is just to use the head of the polisher to spread the polish all over the panel. Just like you did with the compound, use a side to side fashion, only this time instead of only covering an inch over a second, you can move at three to five inches per second. You'll notice that you get through a panel now at least two or three times as fast. Now take your time and go over every single panel on the car just like you did with the compounding step. Now once you've gone over the whole car in polish, you need to remove all of the excess and I cannot emphasize this enough. You have to use clean microfiber towels if you're gonna get the best finish. Otherwise, if you keep rubbing a microfiber towel on your car that already has some polish within its fibers, you're just gonna smear around your finish. So the hood was actually a great example of this exact problem, and once I switch over to a new microfiber, look at that great finish that was revealed underneath. Now throughout this entire process, you've made a great mess of your windows. So my recommendation is that you get a nice glass cleaner and clean up all the old compound and polish around your glass windows just to make this entire project wrap up and come together in the end. Now this is what your car is supposed to look like. Now this would be a great time to do a protective waxing of your vehicle, but if you remember from the beginning of this video, we have somewhere to be. All right. Well, if you saw the beginning of this video, I talked about having to get over to the inspection station for an appointment. And of course, it took longer than expected. I always hear that beep, what is that? I think it's that. And it took longer than expected to do our paint correction. Damn, and for the second time, I forgot to shut the garage. Okay, let's, let's, come on, <laughs> it's gonna be late. All right, so number one, the paint correction looks incredible. Absolutely incredible. Now we have to get over to my mechanic and he's gonna go ahead and inspect our vehicle. He's also going to reset the airbag light because if you remember, I had a burnt fuse in the fuse box that was related to the steering wheel and the horn, which now should work. It works. So the next time that you and I meet in this car in about 10 seconds or less, we should have a fully inspected Porsche 911. All right guys, it's a few days later and I have some great news for everybody. Our Porsche 911 is now inspected, not only from a safety inspection standpoint, but also from an emission standpoint. That's why we have two stickers on the dash. Now safety inspection is looking at things like tires, brakes, lights, and horn, etc. And of course an emissions inspection is just simply that for the emissions. But even more important with our Porsche 911 is that our dash currently has no lights whatsoever. No check engine light, no airbag light. And what that means is that now that we have two stickers on the dash, whoa, speed bump. So with two stickers on the windshield, that's gonna keep the police off of our backs. And with no lights on the dash whatsoever, that is gonna keep the haters away. So if you remember when we first picked up our Porsche 911, it not only had front end damage, but the horn didn't work, it had an airbag light, the paint looked awful, and we've essentially fixed all of those problems, and now we have a running, driving, inspected 
Porsche 911, which means this vehicle, which of course I paid about $16,000 for, is now worth somewhere near 20 to 25,000 bucks. Now hopefully you understand just how easy it is to find a really good deal because they are out there. And I really am gonna hate to sell this car. Did I say that out loud? Guys, if you wanna see what's next for this Porsche 911 or where it's headed, be sure to subscribe to Ed Gasket and check out Ed Gasket Garage on Instagram for updates on this vehicle and other builds in the garage between YouTube videos. Otherwise guys, if you need us between now and our next video, we'll be in the garage.